Hey, man. You know what? What, Tim? Every morning I wake up to this guitar lick. This I'm is sure you do. This is my alarm. Every right. morning. Well, I want to welcome everyone to CMS IT Weekly 205. 205. I'm, I'm Jake Standish. I'm Tim Smith. And we have a guest here today. We do. We have Cedric. Cedric. Who is our... Can we just name him? He's kind of called like Prince. Can just be <laughs> Cedric. So All right, moving right along. <laughs> Your show. <laughs> oh, okay. So Cedric well, is CMS's Information Systems Manager. Sure. Correct? Yes. Right. Okay. So Every week we like to get together and talk about instructional, educational, instructional technology stuff. Uh, Cedric is part of a larger team here at CMS that we are all part of. It used to be called Technology Services. Now we're part of the System... Chief you know, information, office. information Office. And, uh, you know, part of our idea of this whole getting together every week is to build a community of people who are involved in the educational tech side of things. Cedric is a part of that community. And the people he represents are our system engineers. Our system engineers. So let's get started. That First, uh, you know, you're part of a uh, part of ISNS, which is called Information Systems and Support. What is the overall purpose? What do they do? What is, what is ISNS? Okay, well, a long time ago, we were all we were all lumped up in one organization, one a department, and we kind of now have broke up into subsidiaries. So basically, the ISNS department basically we help uh, facilitate and handle and support all the technology in the district on a day to day basis. Um, we have a lot of different facets in there: phones, computers, and I'm glad you brought that up because you said all the technology. Mm -hmm. So we're not talking about just our desktop computers, no. although that in and of itself is huge. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of other technology pieces that support that. That's correct. We okay. do a lot of the the cabling, the uh, the data stuff, the closets, and that. Now we're all going wireless, though. We're all going wireless. But wireless does not mean without wires. No, nope, but, but we, but <laughs> we also a lot of do wires support wireless. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Indeed. So the cabling is still going to be an right. aspect. Good. See, so there has to be that that support system behind all that. So right. that that is great. Now you are the information system manager. Correct. What is that? What do you? What's your job and title do? Basically, on a day-to-day -day basis, it is what it says. I basically manage the technology on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure all of the um, technology in the field is is, is managed and help um, facilitate and getting that information and getting those types of systems that we support out in the field on a day-to-day -day basis. I know. I don't know if you were the same person five years ago, but when you would come out to my school. <laughs> I was always thrilled. I was like, Cedric's here! And he was like, dude, I got work to do. So, uh, you and know. Luckily, that feeling is the same at, at, at school still now. Like, that is, yeah, it is, a that is great. Um, there was two things, though. One, I was excited to see Cedric, but the other thing was that meant there was some bad crap going down at my school that my system engineer didn't have time, wasn't able to, right. and so they had to call in, uh, call in the, call you in to, to kind of fix mm -hmm. it. It was going to take more than an hour to mm -hmm. make things happen. So, you know, I was always appreciative to see you, and because uh, I know you're busy, and uh, there's only one of you, right? Correct. So, well, how many system engineers are there? Currently, right now, there's actually 13 systems engineers wow. out in the field. 13. And how many schools? Uh, right now, we're we're supporting about 178 school sites. 178 schools supported by only 13 system engineers. Wow. Correct. Okay. So, man, folks, just realize <laughs> that's that's a lot of schools that each engineer has to take care of. And so, yeah. they're busy. <laughs> Tell us a little about system engineers. Why, why do we have them? What is their, what is their role, their purpose? Um, you know, basically a systems engineer, um, the position came around probably about nine or ten years ago. Um, basically that system engineer helps um, support the technology in the schools that, you know, the actual tech contact base there. Um, sometimes it's on a higher scale level of support that that engineer supports. So basically they're there to help um, all of the technology needs in the schools that this need to be done on a higher level. Yeah, uh, there's, there's stuff that I could never do as a tech contact right. and, and our tech contacts, uh, many of them as you know are, are teachers or, mm -hmm. or aides, uh, they don't... Media specialists. Media specialists. They don't have time to get all these things done, um, just minimal troubleshooting. And so the system engineer comes in and hopefully is able to get things up and running and right. if not then we have to call you in, and sometimes it's bigger than that. Sometimes it's a hardware issue, mm -hmm. right? So if it's hardware, it gets pushed off to another group? It gets pushed off to uh, FSI, Fortress Systems, mm -hmm. which is our contract company, okay. and they handle all of our hardware all right. stuff. 
So when a system engineer comes to the school, mm -hmm. what, should, what should our teachers expect? Let's say I'm a classroom teacher and in comes a system engineer. What, how should I react to them? Um, hopefully, like you said before, hopefully you should react like when you know when they, when they leave, you know it's fixed. So hopefully a, 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 a warm, fuzzy feeling that when that person comes in your classroom, that one, you're there to help, two, when you leave, you know that that instructional learning using that piece of technology is going to work for that for that child or student when they leave. Cool. Now when you say when, when the engineer leaves you know it's fixed, mm -hmm. the it is what's been requested to be fixed. Correct. Not Correct. every problem at the school that the engineers... We like to fix every problem at the about. school but you know some sometimes we get out to the site there's things that we don't know about. Um, we do the engineers that that's going to follow into some of your other questions about procedural stuff, but mm -hmm. the engineers are only out there to fix probably what has been requested on the ticket, not unless it's a mass blanket issue that he's fixing per classroom. Okay. You bring up a ticket. What is the best way to get a system engineer to help me? All right, because here I'm, I'm in my classroom. I'm a, I'm a normal classroom teacher, fifth grade teacher. I, I'm teaching on my smart board. In comes a system engineer who I've met before. Very nice, warm, fuzzy feelings. And then I want to talk about my printer that's broken. I want to talk about this and that. And what are they going to probably have to say? Well, you know, a, a lot of when we do come into schools, we're basically a lot of engineers do know their schools very well, and the staff knows them very well too. So, you know, when they're walking up down the hallway, we usually get that generic, and we have been for many years. That's the computer guy. That's the computer <laughs> woman. Uh, and we snatch them in the hallway, and we're also included in the hips and lips down the line, walking down with students. But the, the best way actually to do it is 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 going through the help desk. A ticket actually created. That way, there's a history of the problem. That way, their tech contact knows. But the best way for a um, any kind of piece of equipment or any kind of issue at the school to get fixed on a school-based level is to call the help desk and get an actual help desk ticket put in. And there's a lot of instructions on out, out there how to do that. Yeah. And that's primarily for the tech contact to do. Correct. All right. So the tech contact. So as a classroom teacher, I should let my, my tech contact know. They'll call the help desk, and then soon a system engineer will come out. Correct. So right. Approximately two weekish. Um, you know, we, we work off priorities. Um, all tickets are based on priorities. We have levels one through four with our new SLA okay. um, standards. All right. So basically, one being you know a hot issue, three being we'll be out there, and that all stuff falls into our SLA, our service level agreement about the days we should will will respond in a level in a, a actual problem will be resolved. So okay. I mean, at a, a level three ticket, I mean you're looking at probably about anywhere from five to seven business days probably on our SLA, and then going up. To, to two and three. Okay, so. that's a uh, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Uh, who supports the engineers? Um, actually, you know the the actual there's a systems engineer, mm -hmm. and there's also a senior systems engineer. Okay. Um, it's also tiered level support. So um, basically, what happens is when that systems engineer needs to rely on if there's a bigger issue and needs to rely on getting that thing fixed they'll call upon their actual senior systems engineer. Um, you guys have, have talked to Pete Laney a couple of times. And he is awesome. He's like our, our, our um, he handles like the manship here in, in the APC and okay. handles. And so basically right now, since I'm out being the information systems manager, he's like a one-stop shop fixed to the systems engineers. Okay. And when there's problems out there, they can't, they pretty much call into the man center and call him. That's good. So the engineers aren't on their own no. to solve problems, they can get right. I, I've been, at, I was a systems engineer for many years at the, the feel like Tim was explaining, and, and you know, I, I do know what that position entails and I do know about it. So, the worst thing you want is somebody out there supporting yeah. people knowing that they don't have any support themselves, right? So, we kind of make sure that doesn't happen. Yes, very cool. Now, is there a, a common help desk ticket that uh, that comes across that's an easy fix for teachers? Is there something that you've seen a lot? I would that, probably say the most common help desk ticket we've seen is the CMS sites not available pop up on the mm -hmm. screen. Uh, usually what we've seen and most of the time is that something like the network cable is not plugged in, um, not plugged oh, into the wall, yes. not plugged into the... So you're talking about right when we go to log in mm -hmm. or we've put in our, our username and our password and it's CMS sites we're posting and it doesn't go anywhere. Correct. And usually that means there's no connectivity to the network. That's correct. And you're saying it's usually because it's not plugged in. Usually the, the patch the cable. Ethernet. Sometimes patch cables in the back. We've also seen. Well, I remember years ago I went somewhere where 
there was a classroom pet that went around that afternoon <laughs> and actually chewed all the patch cables, Mr. Bunny, uh, Mr. And, Bunny. and actually chewed all the patch cables in the classroom. That's got to be and awesome. And CMS sites was unavailable on the machines. They could not log in. And then I went there as an engineer to support a ticket. And the patch cables were chewed in half. And my Mr. Bunny was sitting on the counter back in its cage. Oh. <laughs> but that's not that's so, not the norm. That's just some stuff. That, that's not the norm. That's just some stuff you have to look at. But I'll say the most common issue out there is the CMS sites unavailable. Users trying to log on can't because there's no network activity. Mini cool. mini, a mini hub that we try to prevent from being in the classrooms or unplugged. Student might have kicked it under the table. We have a lot of situations where uh, patch cables are on the floor. Where certain situations, the school was created like that and okay. constructed, and oh, kids man. have kicked the patch cables and stuff like that. So that's one of the main things to look for. The help desk tries to tell those users to look for that, but you know, and being in a classroom with a teacher and having to make sure the kids are in order and everything, it's, it's hard sometimes as a classroom teacher to look for that kind of stuff. Indeed. Well, that's good to know because I actually have answered a few of those this uh, this year <laughs> myself, uh, and I know Jake has too. Uh, you know, it is exciting to know that there are people, real people, mm -hmm. actually working for CMS, working on our computers for us. That our ultimate when I uh, when I say us, I'm talking Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools. The desire for all that your system engineers, yourself mm -hmm. included, are our students and teachers able to use technology. Yeah, and, and, and also one, one thing in the dynamics of our team is I named about, I named that we have 13 field systems engineers, and out of that 13, six of them were actually previous tech contacts. Okay. Um, so we That's actually excellent. try to build within the school, and we try to build and pull, and you know, we try to use the skills of those that have already been in the school environment. So yeah. out of those 13, six were tech contacts for many years in the schools. So they, they, they get the feel for that. Mm -hmm. You know, the other, thing, the other thing I think is exciting, uh, we were talking about it a little bit earlier, uh, you've got students, I'm sorry, you've got your own children in the system mm -hmm. in CMS and so this is something that you that you care about because your children are also involved in this learning endeavor. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm actually a product of the Charlotte Mecklenburg School Systems. <laughs> really? There we yeah, go. So from K through 12. So Awesome. Uh, so you know this is this is part of that larger community that we, we hope to build and want to build and and that uh, our ultimate goal and desire is the technology is up and running and working for all of our teachers and students. You know, do you have any, do you have any questions for us? No, I, I, like I told you before, I think this is actually a, a great tool. Um, I talked to you before about how to get stuff out, you know, out in the mainstream into, you know, our users out there. So this is, looks like a very valuable tool and I just appreciate you guys having me on. Well, Cedric, you're welcome to come back anytime. Give us it. any updates. We'll, we'll, we'll put in the Cedric report. <laughs> That's right. Well, anytime you got something yeah. you want us to, to share about the system engineers, we'll be glad if to there's If there's anything at all, you just let us know. We always, we have a chant, as our, as our, as our workers know, we have a chant we do at the end of every show. I, I didn't tell you about it earlier, because I thought you would be a little embarrassed <laughs> to do it, but the, the way we do it, it's, it's kind of like a cheerleading thing. It's, you ready? You two ready? Because Jake always does it with me, are you ready? Okay. Give me an eye! Eye. All right, we'll work on the chant, boys. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, you know, it was, uh, it was good having you, Cedric. Uh, we'll, we'll see you soon, and uh, have a good week. At some point, we hit stop. <laughs> How do I hit stop on this crazy? F10. F10.